Potency is one of the most important and valuable parameters that can be measured for a drug. Cellular therapies that produce systemic effects to the patient are in the process or have been designated as drugs and therefore require a potency assay. Although guidelines and regulations with respect to potency are becoming commonplace, the regulatory agencies leave it up to the applicant of a biologics license or investigative drug application to demonstrate how potency is measured for a specific cell therapy or regenerative medicine product. However, there are many misconceptions and misunderstandings regarding the field of potency for cellular therapeutics. For example, the net cord fact standards for core blood accreditation list the classic colony forming unit assay as a potency assay, when in fact this subjective, non-validated and retrospective assay could not be further from the goal of measuring potency. On September 29, 2013, this year, these standards will thankfully change to finally allow advanced and validated potency assays to be used in this arena. This introduction forms the basis of concepts and principles that are used in assays developed by Hemogenics specifically to measure potency of hematopoietic stem cells and mesenchymal stem cells and lay the basis for future assays developed by the company. So let's first consider a definition of potency. There are several definitions of potency and even the regulatory agencies, FDA and the European Medicines Agency, EMA, have different definitions. However, a definition of potency that incorporates most of the main attributes may be considered as follows. Potency is a quantitative and validative measure of biological activity of the active ingredients or components of a product which, when administered, produces the intended effect or response. As you will see, the terms quantitative, validated, active ingredients and intended effect or response are used for a specific reason that will become clear shortly. So when is a potency actually required, a potency assay actually required? A potency assay is required for any cellular therapeutic or regenerative medicine product that can result in a systemic effect. A potency assay of a therapeutic must be performed prior to its use in a patient. As you will see, an assay that provides retrospective results, especially with respect to clinical outcome, is really of no use as a potency assay. Developing a potency assay should be one of the first priorities in developing or establishing a therapeutic. Why is potency so important? Well, it ensures product stability and consistency during the manufacture process. It allows evaluation and or correlation with a clinical response, but this need not necessarily be a clinical outcome. It predicts and avoids product failure or toxicity due to improper potency. It predicts whether the product can be released for use. And it predicts the dose required to ensure the product will perform as intended. It's important to emphasize that all of these factors demonstrate the predictive or prospective nature of potency. A potency assay cannot be retrospective and potency is of no use after the fact. For this reason and in the majority of cases for a cell therapy product, potency will not correlate with clinical outcome. This fact is often misunderstood, especially in the cell therapy arena, because it causes a significant problem. Indeed, indeed, this problem is stated in the FDA guidelines from January 2011 on potency tests for cellular and gene therapy products, namely that the efficacy data from a well-controlled clinical investigation can provide evidence that a product has biological activity and thus is potent. However, use of clinical study data may not be a practical method to quantitatively test for potency to release a lot. That means that clinical data may not be available prior to release of the individual product lots and clinical data may not be coupled 
to individual lots. And this directly influences the tests for potency. According to the European Medicines Agency, a test for potency is an appropriately validated assay that should be based on a defined biological effect as close as possible to the mechanism of action and or clinical response. The FDA requires that a potency assay has to be specifically designed for, a, for each product that will satisfy its definition of potency. So what are the requirements for a potency assay? In the United States, the regulations of, for a potency assay to, for an assay to measure potency are embedded in the Code of Federal Regulations. Since a potency assay is specifically used for release testing of a product, that is, before the product is actually used, all potency assays of licensed by law biological drug products must comply with applicable biologics and CGMP regulations and these include uh, that it indicates biological activity specific to a product, results allow the release of the product, it provides quantitative data, meets predefined acceptance and or rejection criteria, includes reference materials, standards and controls, demonstrates validation and measures the identity and activity of the active ingredients. This is where our definition of potency has been derived that was stated at the beginning of this presentation. In order to understand how potency might be measured for a cellular therapeutic, let's take a look at how potency is actually measured for a traditional drug. Potency is always measured from a dose-response relationship. Variable 1 is the concentration of the drug. Variable 2 is the assay response. Potency must always be measured against the reference standard, the potency of which is always 1. The activity of this reference standard is also known and therefore allows the dose of the sample to be calculated. The measure of potency is the potency ratio, which for a traditional drug is calculated from the measure of displacement to the left or right of the reference standard. The slope of the linear portion of the dose response, whether it is positive for a, stimu for a stimulant or negative for an inhibitory factor, must be statistically parallel with that of the slope of the reference standard. If parallelism does not occur, the sample is different to that of the reference standard or contains contaminants. A sample with a horizontal displacement to the left of the reference standard indicates greater potency and therefore a lower dose is required to obtain the same response as the reference standard. The opposite is true for a sample displaced to the right of the reference standard indicated by decreased potency. These concepts have been used in the pharmaceutical industry for years. The question is, can they be applied also to cells? The answer to this question is, is a simple yes, but with modifications. So I hope you will continue this journey on potency that addresses some of the major questions, describes how to establish a reference standard, and how potency can, can be measured using examples of hematopoietic and mesenchymal stem cell therapeutic products. Thank you.